Welcome to another Great Cal Basic demonstration. This is a short version of installing the latest release. It's going to focus on installation and programming two types of microcontrollers. First of all, let's go to the website and download the software. Please take some time to review the website because it has a great amount of information in the home about our suite of software and, and other information. Let me download the software and install it. This will go to um, SourceForge, which is our repository for our code. We update regularly and um, if you uh, keep your eye on the note on the website, you'll see when we make new releases. Let me show you what I've got on my desktop. I've got on my desktop here, I've got a uh, an Uno board and a micro and a, a low pin count board for microchip. Let's take them away, slide that away. Let me just disassemble this and show you what I've got. USB cable. It's got a Pit Kit 2 programmer, relatively cheap and ubiquitous programmer and a board. This board connects to the micro uh, the programmer via a connector and a USB cable plugs in the end. You will note that the green light has come on to indicate power. This board is relatively simple. It's got a switch, some LEDs and a potentiometer pre-configured. The pin or pins of the microcontroller are connected to the LEDs. We will be programming that in a moment using the uh, Great Cal Basic. Now, let's go back to our um, download and we're going to take a few moments to install the software. You will get various warnings under Windows 10 about the installation. Please proceed to read our licensing agreement and credit the team that create the software. Take the defaults, all the defaults, when making a new installation. This will install the compiler, the editors, and the IDE, 1100 chips, 500 to 600 demonstration files so that you can get going quite quickly. Programmers, we're going to look at two ways of programming today using two of the programmers installed, but we installed PitKit 2, PitKit 3, programmers for Arduinos, programmers for a whole series of bootloaders and other programmers. So let's press on and minimize my browser and it will open up the editor into the IDE. I'm going to slide that to the right, the left, sorry, so that we can see the, the program in the right hand window of the IDE. And in here we have the program tree, which we'll be using in larger programs. Let me quickly explain anything in green is a comment. Anything in blue is typically a command. So what is this um, chip in here? Well, I happen to know that this chip is called a 16F. 1829 and I can verify that because in my installation I've got a new installation of Great Cow Basic and it shows me an icon for Pit Kit 2 which happens to be installed by default and if I look very carefully I can see that's a 16F 1829 so let me show you what you can do I'm going to remove that comment just to make it a bit tidy for us and I'm going to change the chip line. Make it slide that to the left so we can see it. To 1829, which is the same as the chip here, which is connected. Well, I could program that immediately, but I just need to ensure that the program, which is going to loop forever, and it's going to pulse an LED and then wait for 900 milliseconds, is set up correctly. Well, I happen to know that the port I need to drive is C.0. And I'm going to turn it on for 100 milliseconds. And then I'm going to, I'll just delete that comment. <laughs> and then I'll uh, wait 900 milliseconds on an off state. On for 100, off for 900. 
milliseconds. Let's program it by pressing the hex and flash. Now, this will be quite quick because Great Cow Basic is very fast. It's taken the user code, it's generated native assembler for this particular chip, it's created a hexadecimal file for that specific chip, and it's programmed it down the USB cable to the PIC kit 2, and now the LED is flashing. If I want to make another LED flash, I simply change the port. Takes the user program, creates the hex file, removes the program, and then reprograms it with our new LED. There, look, it's as simple as that. Pick kit two, one of these, is it, if your chip supports the pick kit two, great cow basic works out of the box. No configuration required. Let me just reattach that and slide that to the right. Sliding in from the left is an Uno. This is, it's a microcontroller. It has an LED. This is the power LED that's very bright at the moment. And it hence my camera goes a bit weird. And it will settle down in a moment. And I'm going to make this LED here flash the same as previously. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to remove the command in my program. I'll comment it out. How about that? And I'll uncomment the one beneath it. And it happens to be that the 328... Let me just... There we go. The color's sorted out. It happens to be that an Uno is a Mega 328P. Now, I need to understand how to program this. Well, let me reassure you that... Um, the uh, mega uh, the mega is attached via a programming serial port but what serial port is it attached to we can determine that by looking at our configuration of our computer we do that by entering the device manager and in there we'll see a communications port and that communications port is where my arduino is attached to it's attached to com3 let me just prove that i'll unattach that it's gone and I'll put it back in again, and it's reappeared. So we now know it's on COM3. So very quickly, I'm going to edit my configuration for that. I'll maximize my program so you can see it. And in here, I've got a little drop-down icon that says Edit AVR Batch Programmer, and it opens up the command files. Now, by default, it programs a USB ASP programmer, but let's change this to the UNO. By remarking that out, we'll do a search for the word UNO. We'll find the word UNO. Remove the command. So we make it blue. And just change the COM port to our communications port or COM port, COM port 3. Save that. Close that down. Back to our first start program. And um, I'll just move the camera. We can see everything. There we go. Now, to program the LED, I've got to change my port because it's on a different port. I wish it was on the same, but it can't be. It's called B5, port B5. And we've got the same program. All I've done is change the chip and the port. I'm now going to program it. In a few moments, it's generating assembler and a hex file specific for the Uno. It flashed the two programming LEDs, receive and transmit, and now we have an LED that's flashing every 900 milliseconds with a 100 millisecond on state. You can see the assembler by, by look in the, uh, choosing the correct option in here, in the IDE, and you will see the assembler for this specific chip if you want to learn assembler. And you can see how we set it up and program it. So the goal here was to show you how to program two different chips with um, Great Cal Basic, two different architectures, two different programming styles, one IDE. That's the benefit, one of the benefits of Great Cal Basic. So my um, goal here was to install the latest and greatest release of Great Cal Basic and show you how to do that.
we'll call that a wrap.